When it comes to Chromebooks on the higher end of the price spectrum, the main way we differentiate those devices from the less expensive ones is by feature set and build quality. At the end of the day, a Chromebook is a Chromebook, and there are plenty of fast, affordable options out there for users just after utility and speed first and foremost. But for some users, however, there's more to the equation of what makes up a great Chromebook experience. And if you're like me, things like precise build quality, higher grade build materials, and extra perks make a Chromebook worth a bit more at the register. That's generally the case with the new Lenovo ThinkPad C13 Yoga Chromebook, a device that comes with plenty of extras and a very robust approach to build quality, but also asks that potential buyers spend a bit more in order to get them. For Chromebook makers these days, the audience for this type of device leans more towards the enterprise, but in my time with the C13 Yoga, I really feel there's a set of users out there, both corporate and consumer, that would really love to have some of the features on offer by Lenovo here. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers because they're frankly awesome at what they do. And that's keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or out and about. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunboxed.com forward slash NordVPN, where you can learn more and get started today. Under the hood on this Chromebook, there's a lot going on and we're gonna get to all of it. But before we can crack open the lid, we really should take a moment and appreciate the great build quality for what it is. Lenovo didn't hold back on this one, and honestly it shows. The color, this deep blue, is stunning, and the feel, the fit and finish of this Chromebook is excellent all around. Does it scream corporate? Absolutely. But it also pulls off the whole ThinkPad vibe without feeling like a clunker. From the moment I got it out of the box, I've just been impressed with the styling, the feel, and the build quality of this Chromebook. On top of just looking good and feeling really well made, it also comes with the standard abuse resistant mil spec 810G certification against shock and vibration and humidity and all that stuff. It's built like a tank and it feels like it too. There's no creaking, no bending, no flexing in this chassis. While not the thinnest or lightest Chromebook out there, it's 15.5 millimeters thick and weighs in at 3.3 pounds, it doesn't feel too large for a 13.3 inch laptop and fits neatly into a bag with no real issues to speak of. Yes, there are fan vents, but they don't look garish or ridiculous and all the parts of the standard ThinkPad build are here, including that cool little glowing dot on the eye in the lid logo. Finishing our tour of those outer portions of the device, you get fantastic and flexible I.O. with all the ports you really could ask for. Two USB Type-C ports are positioned one on a side, and there are not one but two USB Type-A ports, a full-size HDMI port, a micro SD card slot, headphone microphone jack, and a Kensington lock for additional security. Put plainly, if you need to connect anything to this Chromebook, the ports outside kind of have you covered. Like other devices, I ended up utilizing that full-size HDMI port a couple times during my review process, and I'm glad to see this port making a comeback, especially for student and working class focused Chromebooks. All right, so cracking this thing open and getting to some more of the perks that come with the C13 Yoga, let's start with the hinge. It's firm yet malleable. It's really integral to making the whole device a yoga branded Chromebook. I mean, Lenovo was the first to make these sorts of 360 degree laptops and their experience really does show here. All the standard convertible modes apply, but there's just a firmness to the hinge here that few transforming devices nail this well. This is a great mechanism and really, really well built. Once you do get past that hinge, you're met with a very good 13.3 inch, 16 by nine, 1080p screen. The colors are balanced, the viewing angles are great, and the brightness is usable in most environments at 300 nits. While there's a 4K version of this device that you can buy, I still stand by my opinion that 1080p on a 13.3 inch screen is plenty. You don't really need to pay for all that extra processing overhead that you honestly aren't benefiting much from with a 4K screen. The bezels are decently small, and overall, I was just happy to work on this screen. It's not class leading, but it isn't really a detractor either. Above that display, you have a not surprising 720p webcam that behaves like a 720p webcam. It gets the job done for video calls, but little else. And it does come with a manual privacy shade, and it can quickly be closed up for assured privacy when the device is turned on or off. While we're talking about cameras, let's talk about how great the wide-angle, world-facing shooter is on this Chromebook. Nestled on the bottom half of it, right under the screen, this 5-megapixel camera has been honestly just like a go-to solution for our team calls this past month. Between some actual autofocus and decent dynamic range, for a Chromebook anyway, this camera has been good enough to actually make it our larger meeting camera every time we set up a shot. I didn't expect it to be any good at all, to be honest with you, and was pretty surprised. It's actually pretty awesome. 
As I said before, there's no mistaking this as a ThinkPad laptop, and we only see more of that DNA emerge as we get into all the features packed into the bottom half of this Chromebook. Let's start with a very excellent backlit keyboard. With Lenovo's signature rounded keycaps, a lovely amount of travel, and just a satisfying click, very low noise, I was fast and accurate when typing from this one and found I just enjoyed the overall experience. The other standard Chromebook necessity is the trackpad, and while this one is glass, it is smooth, and it has a fantastic click mechanism, I did find it to be a little bit on the small side. With trackpads only growing in size on just about every laptop out there, the diminutive ThinkPad touch surface was just a bit of a letdown, but there's reason it's so tiny and it gets us into some of the additional perks that we see in this particular Chromebook. The small trackpad surface sits adjacent to three physical buttons above it, along with a pointer stick buried right in the center of the keyboard. Pair them together and this gives users a different way to interact with this Chromebook versus the more stoic trackpad only approach we generally see with Chrome OS. It seems users are divided on the usefulness on offer here by the red nub, but those who like it seem to really like it. And I've been made aware that for workers in any sort of glove situation, the pointer stick's actually very helpful. Either way you lean, I think it is awesome to see a long-standing hardware feature from the ThinkPad line actually get integrated into a Chromebook. And even if you don't use the nub, there are plenty of users who still like physical buttons on a trackpad. And this gives you the option of left, right, and center mouse buttons if you're one of those people. For me, I kept it to the trackpad only, and I use my multi-finger gestures that I'm used to, and aside from the cramped space, it was honestly pretty great. Another addition right near the trackpad that we always love to see is the inclusion of a fingerprint scanner for better security and faster logins. Sure, there's nothing unique about it on the C13 Yoga, but it's just in a handy spot, it works fast, and it was reliable every time I went to log in. It's just nice to have these things built in. Finally, we have a unique stylus inclusion on this particular Chromebook in the form of a stowable, recharging USI pen. It's the first of many expected USI pens that will live inside the Chromebook they come with and charge up while they're in there. Nestled right up front on the right side, this pen doesn't feel like anything amazing, but it gets the job done and you never have to worry about where it is or whether it's charged up. Like you'd expect, any old USI pen works fine on this device. And the included pen will actually work on other USI compatible Chromebooks but the implementation wasn't perfect. Hopefully only a software issue, the input lag was a bit more than what we're used to with this type of pen, and those lag issues continued with other pens on the same screen. And they weren't an issue when we took the built-in stylus and used it on other Chromebooks. There's something else causing a bit of pen input delay, and we're hoping Lenovo gets it all sorted out, but it doesn't make things unusable by any means. You'll just likely notice it. Now, we have to talk about these speakers. With a side-firing setup, I was kind of hoping for some decent sound with some nice separation, but the actual performance was flat out terrible. Thin, tinny, not loud. These speakers are a use only when necessary kind of hardware inclusion. And honestly, it just stinks. I didn't expect high fidelity. I don't expect that in laptops, but when we get nice build quality all around in other facets, I just kind of expect more from the speakers. These are just plain bad. Like other enterprise focused Chromebooks, the C13 Yoga comes in at a variety of configurations. And the one we tested had the AMD Ryzen 5 3500C processor inside. We've not yet tested the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 7, or Athlon chips in this line, so I can't really comment on how those would perform, but the 3500C was a decent workhorse. Regular benchmarks probably don't tell the whole story here since AMD does ship with a bit more onboard GPU grunt than comparable Intel chips, well, at least until Tiger Lake devices come along. But I did feel a bit of slowdown here and there with my standard workflow. Keeping 10 to 15 windows open across multiple virtual desks on dual displays, 10th gen Intel devices don't really seem to show any signs of slowdown, but I did see some with this AMD 3500C. Now, that's not to say it felt slow necessarily, but I just have to say that I did notice some of those stutters from time to time. Limited to only its internal single screen and the same exact workload, performance really did feel a lot better, and I could do all I needed without feeling like I was really taxing the processor too much. Our device also came with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal NVMe SSD storage. But as I said, this Chromebook can be configured in a bunch of ways. From the AMD Athlon Gold 3150C all the way up to the Ryzen 7 3700C, there are a total of four processors to choose from paired with either four, eight, or 16 gigs of RAM and 32 to 256 gigs of internal storage, and an option to upgrade to a 4K panel too. Some of those configurations drop the included pen or fingerprint scanner or world-facing camera, so you do wanna be sure you really look at all the options before making your selection if 
To this point, this device seems like the right one for you. When it comes to battery life, this device is solidly in the middle of the pack. Expect seven to eight hours of use on a charge and that should get you through a day's work, but not much more. For me, as long as I don't have to hunt down a charger for a standard work day, I'm pretty happy with the battery on any Chromebook. If you're looking for an absolute battery champ, however, this just isn't it. So we've covered a lot to this point, and it's fair to look at a device like the C13 Yoga and feel like it offers way more than you get in most Chromebooks, and you'd be right to think so. While it may not be the best battery life or the best screen you can get in a Chromebook, it does bring a bunch of unique and useful features to the table that honestly are really gonna matter to a lot of users. That being said, all this stuff doesn't come cheap, and the Yoga C13 costs a bit more than what most users are used to in Chromebooks. Now, that's not to say it's wildly expensive, but you need to know what you're going to run into if you've stuck with us this far, and this Chromebook still sounds like it's down your alley. Starting just shy of 600 bucks for the entry-level model that has, frankly, a ridiculous four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage, the price only goes up from there. From the model we tested, you can get it straight from Lenovo for about $850 after what Lenovo calls their web savings. And for what you get, I don't feel like that's outrageous. The model I'd say most should go for is the Ryzen 5 with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, and it comes in at just over $800. But that's a lot of money for a Chromebook with only decent performance. When it comes down to it, you really have to decide if a few things matter to you. Do you like solidly built, feature-rich devices, or do you just need a Chromebook that performs well? If performance and battery and screen are all you're after, something like the Acer Chromebook Spin 713 will be faster, have a better screen, and last longer on a battery for, what, a couple hundred dollars less? But if a garage stylus, a tighter build, extra input methods, a great camera, fingerprint scanner are on the list of must-haves for you, then the Lenovo ThinkPad C13 Yoga Chromebook could be worth your attention. Well guys, that's it for this one. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button and make sure and ring the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.